Dwaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
there and he stopped. I was like, oh, I got it. <laughs> it was just oh, like even harder. So that was my uh, my deal there. And then in the morning, the the masses came. They just it was like dun 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 dun. Everybody's oh, yeah, never running. Fails. Well, and none of them know how to fish the spot. They're all like parked on the spot. They they pull their boats right up. And we're live. And we're live. <laughs> I'm sorry, Isis. <laughs> I apologize. Do it again. Oh, and I apologize. Oh, and last week, Facebook took down half of our show because of the midget joke, I think. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm sorry. I apologize. I'll be nicer. I'll try. Anyways. So we were talking about my kayak trip. Uh, caught some dinks. Lost some big fish. Uh, Brian caught a couple nice ones. but And uh, I think Bear caught some trout. You, however, had a really cool time over on the East Coast. Yeah. It was, it was a definitely an interesting trip. So... Uh, four hour ride over, uh, first time towing with the new truck thing ran beautifully. I almost forgot the boat was there and took somebody out, but, uh, <laughs> you're not That's supposed not to talk good. about that yeah. live. That's all right. You know, but, um, they got the yeah, we got over there. We had all kinds of issues though. Uh, in the very beginning, we, no, I had to borrow a trailer from Intrepid because, uh, which thank you by the way, uh, cause the leaf springs on our trailer were all broken. Okay, well, what were you going to do? Let's let people know what yeah, you were We were going over off. for the uh, uh, 39th Annual Big Brothers and Big Sisters uh, charity event. So uh, I went down Thursday. On Friday, we get to the boat ramp. I'm using a new trailer. We get the boat in the water. We pay for parking. My dad goes to park the boat and trailer in the slip. It's sticking out like five feet past the lines. Then there's this big sign that says, if you're sticking out past the lines, you're going to get a fine. Of course, we're right... <laughs> The, the police station's right there, the Marine, the, the Marine unit. The guy says, yeah, it's about 100 bucks." <laughs> so we ended up having to take the boat over. We ended up leaving it in the water at the Bahia Mar. I left the trailer over there. So that was our whole fun morning on Friday. And then we go out to catch bait, and there's, there's zero bait out there. It was so hard to catch bait. The, uh, the fresh water from all the rain killed fishing over there. But uh, we ended up picking up our kids on Saturday and uh, headed offshore. A friend of mine, uh, Josh. How many kids do you have? We had three kids and, and, their, and their match, their big brother and right. big sister. And uh, so we ran down to Hallandale. We got a, a little tip from my buddy Josh that they were catching 40-pound amberjack down there. So we so you know we ran down that way. So you were trying to get their arms ripped off of their bodies. Yeah. Well, yeah. You're trying. Uh, you you want to yeah. 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 see what fishing's really about? Pretty, yeah. pretty <laughs> much. So the idea was to catch, to catch the biggest fish. Uh, they the biggest fish, most fish, uh, and the smallest fish, is what they give trophies for. Uh, so we're out there. I didn't bring the downrigger and I didn't have stuff to really go for the amberjack. But I figured if there's amberjack around, and someone's bringing them up, the likelihood if I troll by them, I might pick one or two up. As we're trolling, we watch a monster hammerhead come up and swirl around our bait. And this blue runner was giving him the run for his money. Uh, he just couldn't get turned around fast enough. I finally grabbed the rod, about the fifth spin on it, and I free-lined it. And as soon as that bait realized that there was no tension on him, he, like, froze, like, um, what's it? this is different. <laughs> Gave that shark just enough time to turn around and grab him. Uh, ended up turning out to be about a 12 foot hammerhead. <laughs> nice. So it fought us for about an hour. <laughs> fought us for about an hour. Um, Sydney, which was so the even worse than Amberjack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so now the kids are petrified. Uh, it Jaws was, it movie was, is real. It was. It was fun though. Uh, Sydney uh, was the the girl. She's 15 years old. She was uh, on the rod first. She fought it. She was a trooper. Th about 35 35 minutes or so. About 10, 15 minutes in, though, she was, she was done. She was, she was already giving up. And we're like, no, you can do it. You can do it. After 30 minutes, I looked over. The waterfall of sweat and her <laughs> face was so red. I'm like, all right, Sydney, you, you fought it for about 35 <laughs> minutes. We'll consider this your catch. If you want to tag it. Before I could finish my statement, she was like, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> but uh, I got, a, I got a, uh, about a five, six-minute video of, uh, of that day. So we can go ahead and roll out if you want. Oh, we got a leader. We got a leader. Oh, you see him. Oh, I see him. I see him. Come see him. left. Come left. Come left. He, he's oh, pacing he's... the boat right now. Come left. Oh, you see it. All right, oh stay right God, there on huge. course. On course. Where do you see him? Come he's right. right Come right. Nope, stop. Oh. Come right. It's a hammerhead. Oh, he's... <gasps> oh, no way. Come on, hammerhead. Oh, my God. Yeah. No. I think we, yo, guys, I think Come left. Come right left. Here. Come yeah. left. 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 Oh, 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 oh
Oh, Jesus. No! Oh! Hard, 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 right, hard right, hard right. Oh, we need to get those lines in off the back yeah. of the boat. <laughs> hard right, Dad, hard right. Get it going. I'm as hard as I can do it. <laughs> Got it? What? <laughs> yeah, lines are in. Where's he at? Oh my god. I... Oh, there it is. Look at the shark. He's on the shark. Yeah, Trayvon! Yeah! Why'd you run? Oh man, he ain't he giving up. Ain't no way. Oh man, it's like an eight foot. Problem is, his tail's around the line. Oh. The line's around his tail. Come left, Dad. Come left. Come left. Oh my God, that's humongous. All right, all right. Stop. That's what you guys come were right. battling the whole time. Yeah. Look at that thing. Wow. I thought that was like a research or a black tip or right? Hey, Dad. Yeah, black tip. Yeah. I need you here because I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to get on the wheel. Come over here and grab this real quick. Give me a hand. I'm on help him too. You got it. All right, go ahead. We're, we're still oh here. Oh my God. Are you still filming? Yeah. Right along the boat. Somebody, somebody get that video going. Give me the I got it, I got it. Yeah. Here, Emma. Oh, keep going, keep going. I oh, right, slow down a little, slow down. Oh, he's right there. Oh, oh yeah, he's God. tail wrapped. That's what I'm saying, he's tail wrapped. We've got our first official catch in the boat. Uh, managed to put about a 12 foot hammerhead up along the side of the boat with a legitimate leader touch called into headquarters and they did uh, say that that does count. So I'm gonna go over here with Sydney, who was uh, who was lucky enough to grab the rod first. Sydney, I say hello to everybody. Hi. What, <laughs> what was it like? Um, well, first I didn't know what it was. I thought it was a black fin shark, but as it got close to the boat, me, me and Kim were like, it's a hammerhead. Yep. So that was a little thrilling. I've never seen one, you know, live. Yeah, it's the biggest fish you've ever caught? Easily. Easily? All right. So that was that was her biggest fish. I will tell you this fish probably fought us for every bit of 45 to 50 minutes. Um, we we had we had to we had to tag everybody else in the in, in the boat towards the end. Sydney got a little a little tired. Yeah, she was sweating. 20 minutes. It was, it, I think mean, you you're probably a little longer than 20 minutes, but oh, she was on about a half. Yeah. Hour. Was, uh, she was Okay. So we have Sydney uh on old school, hooked on old school, with a 12 foot hammerhead, the captain is Paul Fleming. Just recapping our day, uh, we fished the 39th annual Big Brothers and Big Sisters uh, fishing tournament today. Yep. Uh, definitely a, an interesting day. It was. Uh, it's been an interesting adventure, uh, bringing the boat over and boat ramp issues and <laughs> all kinds of fun stuff. But uh, we had, uh, see, we had Sydney, Michael, and Tyrell um, out on the boat today. Uh, we ended up getting uh, a 12 foot hammerhead. And as you can see right here in the background, here, what's this? Get up in there. <laughs> That's a first place trophy. So uh, Sydney ended up getting uh, first place for the biggest fish of the day, and uh, we want to just uh, say thank you to Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Broward County for what they do with these kids. Um, John, who uh, was the original uh, guy who started that for Big Brothers and Big Sisters, thirty nine years, been thirty nine years. Uh, just what an awesome day we had! Uh, three kids on the boat. Sydney was a champ. She hung in there for about thirty five, forty minutes, uh, reeling in that. Uh, that big hammerhead oh, yeah. we ended up we ended up having we had a couple sailfish roll up on on our baits but just wouldn't take the bait um and then we had about a nine foot eight nine foot 
tiger shark come out and check out our chum bag. So came okay, right up to the boat. It was so, so cool. Kind of kind of a cool day, but uh, it was definitely a uh, a really cool trip. Uh, definitely, uh, I've got I've got a bunch of video that uh, I'm going to put together for FPN Chronicles, and uh, we appreciate you guys uh, checking in throughout the day and seeing how we were doing. Um, I'll definitely have some video for uh, FPN Outdoors on Wednesday night. So thanks again. And we're back. Thanks Austin. again. <laughs> <laughs> this is the devil. Third time's a charm. All right, guys. I'm sorry, everybody. Whoever, uh, if you guys are coming back in here live, there. Give everybody a second to come back in there. We <laughs> are we building back up, week. Amanda? Well, I mean, we we got people back on we last week after they took us down. So yeah. <laughs> hopefully we got watchers. We're okay. All right, we're co coming back into our audience. Sorry about that, everybody. The devil's in our system. We got to get an exorcist. Yeah. So, anyways, that, that looked like a, it was a lot of fun. It, it was. was. Those kids are never going to forget catching no. the twelve foot hammerhead. Not man. at all. There's that something about seeing something that big, man, that just makes you per yourself in perspective in the world, just where sure. you're at. That's yeah. why I don't like. <laughs> well, and and so we we boated that. We got that one uh, up alongside the boat. We got a good leader touch, uh, and and the catch counted. Obviously, we we took first place with that. But during the day, right after we started putting lines back out, we had two sailfish come up in the spread. Um, one swat a bait off, and the other one just he just he came up on it once, and then and it took off. But it was towards the end of the day, right before we were ready to run back, and my dad was uh, driving the boat uh, while we were trolling. He looks over, he goes, "What is that?" And we look over, and this probably good nine nine or ten foot uh, tiger shark came up out of the blue, came up and put his nose to the chum bag, and then just slowly glided off. He went, <clears throat> nope. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't get in the water. I don't uh, get without a spear gun. So there were some big there were some big big sharks out there. For I sure. was out on the island when you uh, posted that yeah. that video, right? So I'm fishing, I don't have time to really listen to anything. And I'm seeing the part where it's you and your dad are talking. Yeah. And it comes to my mind, I'm like your dad looks like the worst hype man that he ever, like for a rap band or something, like yeah. Flavor Flav. And then, uh, so I asked Vigor what it would look like if you and your dad were in a rap band. <laughs> uh, nice. I like it. I like it. <laughs> so that's what Paul and his dad would look like if they're in a rap band there. I love the facial tattoos. Right? Nice. <laughs> uh, Very 2018 rapper style. Man, gotta love it. Oh so, God, anyways, I, I thought that was amusing. I was like, man, it just looks like the worst hype man ever. Because he's like standing next to you going, yeah, right, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I got to tell you one thing, man. Uh, it, it, that trip, not only is it fun uh, to take the kids out, but it's, it's fun because I get to go out and fish with my dad. Right. Man, I got to tell you, that man, you want to talk about a trooper. He, he was trying to help those kids hold the rod. He kept trying to feed the line in and. Man, he, he worked his rear end off. Yeah, but I bet you uh, he, he slept good on the way home, huh? Uh, <laughs> he didn't, no, he didn't sleep when he got home. He, he, I'm, I'm sure he slept good that night, though. Man. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a lot of work, especially when kids don't have a lot of experience fishing in the first well, place. So. And, then, and then so when we, when we were uh, checking in in the morning, we said, all right, you know, the last two years in a row, yeah. we've got, we, we came home with second place. We're going after first place. We even told the kids on the boat, listen, we're, we're, we're going for one of those hero or zero kind of moments. We're going for that big win, you know. And uh, so when the kids were coming down to the boat, uh, the, the lady that was in charge, uh, Fifi, she goes, all right, they claim that they're going to take first place. I'm like, oh, great. No pressure, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no pressure. But we ended up pulling it out. So it was kind of fun. All right. Well, awesome. Good weekend. So, all right. <clears throat> we'll get into our subject of the day, <coughs> which is reels. I was uh, flipping through the internet the other day, and uh, I, I kind of stumbled on some some pictures of some really old reels, and it just got me thinking of just how far things have come. And it's really uh, kind of weird if you think about how far back it goes. Nobody can really put an exact date on when the first fishing reels came about, mm -hmm. but uh, I saw there was some mention in artwork from China in like the 15th century so it goes back pretty far and uh, as you can imagine as as time goes on things get better but man i'm looking at some of those old 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 stuff and it's basically just a, a little winch with, yeah. with well, the, yeah. the, on it. the title <laughs> one you put up was awesome yeah and with the which is uh, uh i got that right here that's the first one there 
I yeah, got that's uh, awesome. that right there. Is the it's a wooden Scottish pern reel, and that was very popular from 1790 to the 1820s. Wow! So you imagine you using s- that. Yeah. Now where that circle is at the top there, that's where the rod goes, and then that clamps down onto the rod right there. So uh, there's not a lot to it. No, <laughs> it's, uh-uh. it's got the wood top brass sides with a with a wood knob for the turn. It worked. And look at that first braid, though, man. It's just some rope. <laughs> it's just rope. <laughs> <laughs> just throwing some rope out there. You know, that's probably a, a testament to how good the fishery was back then. If you were catching fish with that mess, yeah. no, lead, on, man. no yeah. leader, no leader, just rope to. Yeah, yeah. it's just all the dumb fish were still around. You know uh-huh. what I mean? Hey, man, y'all got some twine. I'm gonna put, <laughs> put it on this reel. <laughs> I got exactly here. what that is. Too. <laughs> <laughs> give me, give me some leaves and some vines. It makes you think, though, man. Just think of how many fish there were back then, because like you're not catching n- nothing with that right now. I don't. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe something big or something. Good luck bringing it in on that. Something that doesn't not. care. Yeah, you know, it's almost like we <laughs> we kind of made the apocalypse. On we got only smart fish left now. That's why it's so yeah. hard to catch fish. The fishery's still good. They're just really smart now. Everybody like, complains about. We pulled out all the slot. stupid ones out of the gene pool. You know. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I, I saw a couple old ones. I thought this was really cool. That was the first one I ran across. And then, uh, let's see, the next one I got here, look at this thing. This is from, this is the Hoosier Fishing Reel from Shakespeare. And wow. I believe that is back from the 40s or 50s. I'm not really sure. Uh, there wasn't a date on this one. But I was just picturing Bobby trying to catch something on this. Like, <laughs> like a torture I try weapon it. in a reel. Doesn't it? Yeah, man. <laughs> if, you, if it spools, you just throw it like a, like a what do they call Chinese well, star. Yeah, right? Say, you just, just say, stick yeah. it in the head. <laughs> if, you, if you couldn't reel them in, you just chuck the star out of them. Exactly. Yeah. You just turn the, the rod around <laughs> and beat the fish with it. <laughs> so that was a, a Hoosier, the Hoosier fishing reel from Shakespeare from back in the day. Uh, this next one I got here. This is from the 1920s. This is the Charles Avi, Avi reel. And this is from 1920, made out of wood. I mean, you can see where it clamps onto the rod down there at the bottom. I uh, thought that was pretty cool. Let's see, I got one. Yeah, it almost looks like a like a like a old fly reel kind of a. Well, that's setup. how a lot of these uh, yeah. got uh, got started. Some of the other reels, they took apart a fly reel and then just beefed it up, made it a little wider. Yeah. And then uh, look at that thing. I thought that was really pretty. This is this that would is. be a cool that's collector's cool. piece right there. That's a Heaton's. And I can't read my own writing because I don't have. Let me get my new glasses on, everybody. Look at this. <laughs> J Dog's got glasses. Get them on. readers on. Ah, look at that. It looks so Heaton smart. Heaton Siemens not- Nottingham <laughs> casting reel. <laughs> Wait, get your mind out of the gutter. Yeah. Go the Nottingham casting reel, and uh, I don't have a date for that one either. But it's pretty old. I thought I was very I pretty. Said the 20s. Super. No, that was the one before it. Oh. Super pretty reel. But uh, and that's why I got Mike and Bobby in here today. I mean, you can see where f- where we started out from. These are not much to it. Just a uh, basically a winch <laughs> attached to <laughs> a rod. Everything's all yeah. the same concept. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and but now the improvements made over time here are uh, pretty leaps and bounds. Yeah, leaps and bounds, <laughs> oh, pretty yeah. exceptional. Now we got drag systems. We did bring the antique one in. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Let's show that real quick, Bobby. Where can we get that? All right, so what do, we, what do we have here? Right. That's the camera right there. You All right, this this is actually one. This big, uh, huge thing that's actually right here. Actually, hand it to Mike. Yeah. yeah. That, that way he can show it to the That camera. right there is a Pen 26. It's got the, I forget what kind of handle on it. Uh, what's it called? Is that your? Is that the one that he was saying you were going to bring in from your grandfather? Yeah, that's from my yes. grandfather. That is actually a late '60s drop reel. It still has the original rope on it from the late '60s. That's and, uh, nice. fully functional. Fully I was just functional. about to say that thing works yeah. better than a lot fully of the reels I see. And too. it's made in the USA. That's probably why it's still working. Yep. And it's yep. never been serviced, as you can tell. It's got you know a little bit of fungus on it, but. I've got three or four of those. No worse than your toes, right? You know what I'm about. Oh, that's green. Mine's at the yellow stage okay. right now. So, yeah. but emerald, I think it's called, or something. The the handle. The handle. Yeah. 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 Uh, but we're. I'm looking at getting them possibly uh, restored because I got four of those. Very cool. So that's, that's cool. That's at, something to at hang on to. At the very to. least, it's a cool collector's piece. Yeah. I've looked them up, and they're going for anywhere from two fifty to three hundred bucks. A really? Piece. That's yes. impressive. The pen yeah. monofilt number twenty six. I that mean, it is the old school. Like when you used to go yes. to the store and buy a buy a pen reel, you didn't have to look at oh, I want this model, that model. It was number twenty six, uh, number I actually forty five for the games that I have for later. I went back to a bunch of Field and Stream magazine uh, yeah. ads from back in the day, 
So you'll see some of the listings for some of those well, <coughs> similar well, reels. This and w- you know what's even crazier is my dad's rod. Now, I know my dad's rod was uh, mid-'90s when I was little and he bought it. He had an old spool of that rope, and he put that on there. I've never seen it break. Every time yeah. he had to cut it with a knife. Now, my dad would tie it onto a leader, but you get in the rocks, you can't break it. No. You cannot break yeah. I don't know what the strength equivalent is to it. But yeah. every time you have to cut it with a knife. So if I could go offshore and find that stuff, I mean, you're not losing any grouper out of the rocks. No, you that's just for crank. sure. That's I wish sure. we knew somebody that had one of those machines that tests not strength. You could probably test the strength. Of it was ridiculous. Really I mean, it was ridiculous. Yeah. Like we, he would almost turn the boat with the with the pulling power. It was insane. Uh, Amanda, what was uh, Manuel saying about that? I see, he was saying that he had uh, some green grass, uh, green, green glass, glass ro- rods. Yeah. That's what they. That's what they used to use yeah, those and on actually, those green glass actually, rods. Actually, I should have brought it, but you said reels. The rod that was on is all wood. Oh, Eyes yeah, and everything yeah. hand-tied. I'll Isn't do that a, like a cane pole? No. No, this is before fiberglass, all right, that stuff. Right. Oh. This was a drop rig, and it's carved, and it's not even it's not even cylindered. It's squared four ways the whole way. All that's hand wrapped and everything. That's cool. One yeah. of these days, I'll do school. one on the old rods, yeah. but I, I was just uh, doing em. the reels this time. Namaste. Um. <laughs> All right, <laughs> FP and Outdoors is back. We're back. We had oh. to pull out a piece of hardware that was just installed that is being, uh, it's being a little crappy it's, on us. It's being a, a I'm it, just it was a gremlin. So we got rid of it. We're back up. Um, anybody that's just joining in, I was hilarious. I was saying all kinds <laughs> of jokes, uh, all kinds of funny stuff. We were just getting to talking about True some of the fishermen. antique rules. Uh, rules? Rules. <laughs> antique rules. Antique rules. Yes, we get a lot of that. Uh, anyways, we are now uh, moving on to the newer reels that have all the good stuff in it that we love today. <laughs> Jumping any, a couple centuries. Is, yeah. that, is anything going to explode? Because I'm prepared for the worst now. I'm no. just waiting for yeah. like a, a camshaft or something. To come between between things blowing up over there and Amanda farting and blowing <laughs> smoke over here. <laughs> I mean, I'm not farting loud. <laughs> <laughs> loud. <laughs> so I got my eyes protected. All I'm right. So like what do we got? What reel do we have open right now? Well, what I got open here, I took the pen slammer because you said you wanted to take a look at some of the drags. Drag system. So yeah. I went into the most, you know, in-depth drag system out there. One of the strongest in a spinning reel. Uh, the reason behind that is it, it's a dual drag system. So with this drag system, you have drag disc sitting on the top and on the bottom, pushing that pressure against <laughs> each other, causing the, the drag. With the two drag caps this gives you with the 5500 about 30 about 35 pounds of of drag capacity and that in a spinning reel is unheard of so you want to see drags that right there is one of the better drag systems out there uh i don't know exactly how they use the drag systems in those way back in the day but it's almost the same as the drag system in this style right here dual drag systems so really, if you think about it, over the years, it's really the same design. Same design. All they did was just make it more in-depth. Right, and yep. just add more strength to it to, and, and, and stopping why? power. And, and so they can they, they can charge you more for it. Yeah, right? <laughs> and it looks cooler. <laughs> it does. It's definitely, it definitely looks cooler. Well, you know, so some of the top-end ones that we're talking about, so we got the pen battle, you said? Yeah, the pen, well... The pen slammer. No slammer, slammer. Yeah, that's slammer. Pen, I'm yeah. Sorry. Pen slammer. That's the one that we got right there. Uh, with pen, they are all sealed up, com- you know, completely. Seventeen different barriers. Uh, you can't seal something up completely, but they are pretty all sealed up. Mm-hmm. Um, when you start talking about some of the different reels that we have out there, I also brought in the Shimano Nasi, Shimano Stratic, the Ballistic Daiwa Ballistic, mm-hmm. and then the BGs. Or as uh, as uh, Amanda Amanda said, I had this brain fart right there. <laughs> My name's Amanda. She said Dewa earlier. Dewa. She's she's like, <laughs> what about the Dewa? That's she hasn't she hasn't made it to the major league podcast yet. We yeah. haven't figured it figured her name out. It was it was actually almost like Indian Dewa ha. Dewa ha. Oh, the ancient like, tribe of Dewa. Yeah, it was, actually, it's Asian. So I don't think it's <laughs> no. okay. Anyways, guys, we so, gotta keep it clean. Yeah. <laughs> we need to stay on for more than well, five minutes. Well, I quit minutes. farting because it's stinking in here. All right. Anyways, so um, so 
with all those different reels that we have now, back in the day, you only had that one. Like right, you said, right. you went in. Now you have vast majorities of different types of reels out there. Each one of them has their own niche, you can say, in the market. With with the pens, it's you know the the, the how they're sealed up, their drag systems. Uh, you start switching over and you look at the diet was, okay. Diet was done a lot in, in the last about five years. And what they've done is they've actually taken some outer space technology and infused those into the aliens, reels. Illuminati. Yeah. yeah, they they have taken the uh, mag seal, what they call the mag seal technology. This is what we use in the NASA, you know, space space in space ah, shuttles. <laughs> <laughs> God, I, that, I had that, a brain fart. I'm, I'm rubbing <laughs> off on you there. Yeah. <laughs> Elusive words. So. With, with that, you know, you, you they also have what they have, um, the digi gears. okay? So, like I said, each, each and every one of these different reels has a different niche, okay? With the digi gears and the mag sealed, uh, I, these make them almost my top, you know, top reel. Okay. You, can't, you can't get enough different types of good quality equipment into a reel. And I'll tell you what, too. I dropped down and bought the Fuegos, the $99 version of that. Awesome, awesome reel. Awesome. It's same same thing. The mag seal, light, light, lightweight. I it? love my BG. But yeah. you know what? Too well, though, the difference with your BG and that ballistic is the the, the white the lightweight body. Mm -hmm. That has the Zion body. This has the the all metal aluminum body. So you get that little rugged, more mm -hmm. you know durability out of it. But it, it's that's with with that ballistic there fighting for the lightest reel out with the CI4. Yeah. Okay. I'll tell you another thing, too. When you guys are wanting to know what reels are durable and stuff, look on a guide's boat, look on, you know, something like myself, because we're using some of the most durable reels out there for one reason, because we have so many people on our yeah. boat. Those BGs are a bad mamma jamma. Mm -hmm. The Fuegos, it's a bad reel for 99 bucks. Yeah. You can't go wrong. Daiwa has really changed the game on their reels. I'm not with Daiwa, but I've had the Shimano's, I've had the Nazis, I've had Stratix, I... I mean, the BGs, yeah. all of it. Well, with that black ionized uh, exterior on the BGs, you can drop these things. You, you're not going to scratch beat it. Beat the crap you out can of beat, it. You can beat the, mm -hmm. and that, And that's, like I said, they, they, that's what they've done. And, and I, I like that. I used to be a Shimano guy. Everything I used to do about Shimano. And Shimano still does a great job. You know, with the Shimanos, they've actually, with their type of technology. That's they, a good reel, too. Yeah. The Nasi, this is the Shimano Nasi. Okay. And they do a coal forging process, what they call the Hagani coal forging process. Hagani. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but that's how I say it. Yeah, we're going to roll with it. <laughs> yes. Yep. That sounds good. I like and it. When, like and when you do the coal forging process, you all you're doing is Hagani. making all these parts more precise because you're stamping all these gear components. You're stamping all, all the rotors, and you're doing it all cold. So there's no time for this thing cold to cool. Cold <laughs> <laughs> to cool down like you do with your hot uh, hot forging parts. So Daiwa does the hot forge. Yeah, no, Daiwa does the hot forge. Shimano does. Shimano's the only one out there that only does the coal forging process. And it, it, it's you couldn't do that before because you could they couldn't get it cut, but I guess now with technology and temperature they can do it now. I don't know how, but they do it now. Like you said, aliens <laughs> and the Illuminati. Maybe that's why we keep going down. You brought all these aliens in Yeah, <laughs> exactly. All right, so like you said, though, I mean, they all kind of fit in their own little yes, niche there. Yeah, they, they, you, they, they have their own niche. For, yep. for the people that uh, get really picky and, and want to specialize mm -hmm. in certain things, there's a lot to choose from. Oh. So that's not a big deal. Oh, on the phone. It's okay. All right, we're good. It's He's got going. an outer box. Yeah, no, it doesn't. That's we'll, okay. We'll say it does. We'll say it does. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that brings me on to what I want to do. I wanted to come up with a top five list of the top spinning reels for 2018. Now, I've seen uh, a few articles here. There's uh, a few uh, reels out there that are being mentioned in the top ten in no particular order. So I figured what we're going to do tonight is pick five, and we're going to make our top five list. So uh, some of them... We've already talked about, but uh, let's see. What am I seeing here? Shimano Stratic C14. CI4. Okay. And he fishes. No, you're real. Sorry. Well, I'm tr trying to read this without my glasses. There's the excuse now. There's <laughs> right, the excuse. There we go. Oh, yeah. Paul wears his all the time. He the Dewa BG3000. <laughs> uh, one I've never even heard of. A 1-3 Creed. 
Anybody? Nothing? No? Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's go down the list here a little bit. Three Creed. Never heard of it. Like I said, no particular animal. Let's see. We got the Stratic. Have to look into that one. The mm -hmm. Akuma Helios yep. SX. Mm -hmm. uh, are we thinking that might be in the top five? We got the BG. Uh, I don't. Uh, I, the, the you let me know C if I get the there. I, I, I would CI4 is is up there, and um, the Daiwa. Um, you got the so Daiwa Ballistic. Ballistic. Yep. Okay. Are, I'm seeing on here the Fluger President XT. Yes, Fluger. Fluger does does, per, you know, with Fluger. Um, you also have the Abu Garcia Revo. Revo rocket. Yep. Was, yep. I'm looking at that now. That one right there. It. Uh, the Lose Mach 2. The Lose is stepping up their game. They're, they're Shimano Nasi, we already talked yep. about that one. Yep. Uh, another Lose on the list. Abu mm. Garcia Pro Max 30. And there's that 1 3 Creed. I'll tell you what, I like I, like yeah, I, was, telling, I was telling Mike and stuff, you know, I, with my guide reels, I've got the Die with Fuegos and stuff. And I used to be a Shimano guy. I went on a limb a couple weeks ago and bought a Quantum Smoke PT30. That thing has impressed me drag wise, low profile. Mm -hmm. I would put that reel in a top five. All right, well, let's go ahead and start compiling the top five here. We, yep. we, we, we threw a few out there. What, what are we talking about? We, we uh, were, I heard the, the Helios should be on the list, maybe? Uh, no? I Helio, no, I, w I, wouldn't, I would not put Helios up there. Um, all right, or, definitely the Stratic. Right? Stratic, yeah, Dra Stratic CI4. Are All we, right, are so we let's talking, put the Stratic CI4. Are we talking strictly, strictly spinning reels, right? Spinning reels yeah, strictly we'll, for we'll, now. Yeah, we'll do stri strictly spinning. I would say the Daiwa Ballistic. Yep, Daiwa Ballistic. All right. Let's see. Let, there you let, go. Let she let spelled it right. It no, I hit, that's Paul. Okay. We'd have to, it. Yeah, you, you can't crack on his typing skills. <laughs> yeah, I can tell it's going really He's well. a hunting and pecking over there. <laughs> I thought it was two L's. The, the Dewa. Gar you got to say it white. Dewa. The Abu Garcia. The Revo. What is it? A, B, U, U, Garcia. Abu Garcia. And it's the Gar Abu Garcia what? Revo. Re Revo? Revo yep. is fine. Revo. R, yep, yep. The X or the SX? What about the Pen Slammer? That's yeah, Pen, yeah, pen, pen Slammer. Pen Slammer is going to go on there. That, that seems to be a tried, true, beat up reel, good reel. And I would, I would put, I'm, I'd put yeah, the I, quantum smoke. Yeah, up I there. wouldn't, I wouldn't put the smoke. No. In more in, in line with the. Um, why am I drawing up the the next one down? The next one. Boca. No, nope, not the Cabo. Boca. The Cabo. Yes. Cabo. Yeah, I saw that on another list. Well, that's a good all-around uh, one, no? That Cabo, the Cabo, Quantum Cabo. Be, just be, just because it has a, a little bit stronger drag drag capacity G -A -N. on it. Um, you you could do, you know, any any U, of your U, your U -M. your up, yeah. U M. Your larger snook. C U A. You could go after tarpon with them. That's what I was saying. All around, you know, Cabo. any any major weight right, fish so you can you can catch with that reel. We've got. Our five are up there, and now we don't. Do we have them in order? Do you think do you guys like this order they're in? Um, I put Daiwa. I was just. I I would definitely go Daiwa Ballistic as yeah. number one. Daiwa be, just because of the, the different type of technology so, uh, that they put are we, in. Are we in agreement? Because that's of the one? aliens. I, I, yeah. I score one. Yeah. Okay. What, what what's the next one down? Ooh. Well, the next it, one would probably be the the CI four, and it'd be a mix up between that Abu Garcia Revo. I was just about to say that. Uh, it's that that what, Abu Garcia. Um, what, what are the benefits of the the CI four versus the Revo then? Well, the the Revo, I like. It's gonna have a little bit better drag system in it. Um, what with that CI four, you almost have like the the Pick pressure. Right the Feel pressure it. when you're reeling this, the the pressure on it, it, it's it's almost absolutely no pressure on the bail system. So you it, you get a lot smoother of of a and it's light. So yeah. it, there's there's a couple different. You could toss it up. You could talk to one guy. He say something else. Me, I'm gonna go with the Revo. You go and with then, the Revo. And what then about the you, Bobby? What do you think, Bobby? Oh, man, I've held the Stratic. I haven't touched the Revo. I'm gonna go with Stratic number two. Hmm. What do you? All right. Well, what about you? I haven't used either of them, so <laughs> it's gonna be I, on you guys. I cut. I. I I kind of I kind of want to lean towards the CI4. All all of the uh, lists that I've seen, I have two pages up, and I, I don't want to get a copyright infringement, so I'm not pulling them up. Uh, have the Stratic above the 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 Revo. Yeah. All right, so let's so we're gonna go the Stratic, the Stratic is two, yep. and the Revo is Revo. three. 
Yep. I what about Facebook? Is anybody on Facebook there have an opinion? This isn't written in stone. Anybody on? I don't know. Um, so that leaves us with the pen it's slammer and see, the that, quantum cabo. That's a hard decision in itself. See right there. now, the, I'm gonna put the slammer at the bottom, okay? Only because of the weight. Mm -hmm. All right, you can only do so much with that reel. Okay. That reel is more of a live bait. Sit it in the in the rod holder, and you're not gonna be jigging with it that is with that reel. All right, so then we're now gonna put here. the cabo is four is uh, four. number four, four, yep. four, and the pen slammer at. Five. Number five. five, but you, but that has so, so, so much of a, of a to major drag on it, and pfft. there it is. All right, that so we got we got our uh, breakdown. The Daiwa Ballistic is number one spot, huh? Mm -hmm. All right, uh, yeah, I'm, number one spot. I'll tell you, because I, I was just like Mike, I was a Shimano guy all through it, Stratic, Stratic, yeah. Stratic, Stratic. All right, and for so me, it dropped down to a ninety-nine dollar reel. I did put the poll up on uh, FPN Outdoor, so mm -hmm. you, anyone that is on and wants to get involved, you can go ahead and click it. Uh, the poll is up for six more days. So six more days. Next right. week we can... Uh, we'll have the official, well, yeah. the the official. official. FPN, uh, but I think this is probably going to stand. This is uh, pretty much in line with all the other lists that I've seen. This is about uh, right. Shimano is still strong in, out in the, the, the world of... Mm -hmm. of people though they 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 won't budge off it they won't try they won't reach out yeah and try yeah. a different they, brand well they they've had a stronghold in 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 a lot of fresh water not even just salt water mm -hmm. you know they they've done a tremendous stuff in the middle part of of the united states let, let alone on 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 the the coastline of it yeah. so they they have a little bit more of a reach than than some of the other reels out real companies out there but dial like said they've they've been doing so much and they're building that name yeah, yeah. I mean, and even I know we're talking uh, spinning reels here, but for what the the reels that I use conventional mm -hmm. offshore, I'm he brought all he brought on. the dial right yep. there. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's the yeah that's right there. that's a Saltiga right there. Yep. that's the that's the LD forty right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. two so speed. We, we use the thirties. Yeah, that's a little smaller reel, but still it's a two speed. Mm -hmm. Um, and I mean the the ratio on them is unreal. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, yeah, and we'll when do you're doing them, dop, them, them real, real deep drops, you got to have a two speed. Yeah. You know, that well, quick retrievals is key. Yeah, well, I mean, especially like we're kingfishing. So, yeah. you know, that kingfish turns and runs at the boat. You want to be able to pull in some line yeah. Yeah. real quick. <laughs> right? you know? Well, we'll be doing more of these lists here as, as we get on uh, further in the year here. I'll probably do one of the, uh, the conventionals and uh, probably do one on rods. We'll, we'll do some different stuff over the year here. Me but, uh, manual online he said the bait runners by shimano are awesome yeah uh, they're yeah but they're very one dimensional one dimensional yep and, and but that bait runner feature you know all all it's real a good companies it's, have, it's, have it's, them a, now. it's a good tarpon setup, especially yeah. if, you, if you tighten down that you know the the secondary drag system and open it up it's a good tarpon yeah. the only thing yeah. i don't like about it is is the clicker on it it's not loud enough you know what else too they don't hold much line compared to no the other because ones. They, they switched their spools over to strictly doing just braid uh, Shimano is actually owned by the same company that Power Pro, you know, is is owned by, uh, that and makes they sense. and they have those those spools now. They they're not deep at all. So if anybody tries to put any mono on there, I've been running no across more people yeah. using mono for some reason. I've ran into a few people now using that mono <laughs> a lot. At, at my shop, it's you know, ninety probably four ninety five percent. Really? Braid. I guess because of yeah. the fresh water, the river stuff? Or? Braid, braid, braid is taken over. Oh, um, braid. Okay. No, braid. Yeah, braid. Okay. Yeah, 95% braid than, than mono, yeah. for sure. All right, everybody. That's uh, So far, that's the 2018 top five spinning reels for FPN Outdoors. All right, I guess we'll get into some uh, current events here. We, we should. We, 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 After we, we do sponsors. We bounced around so much, I think we should probably <laughs> do our sponsors. Should I put the sunglasses on? Yeah, we're just gonna, explosion? I'm just going to go through it fast. I'm, I'm not going to get silly with this. You might want to drop that list off of there. there you go. I got it. All right. Oh, look at sorry. this. This is like old school looking. <laughs> oh, dramatic. There it is. All right, everybody, FPN Outdoors is brought to you by Coastal Wealth. Go to MyCoastalWealth.com. Get your financial future together. Go to MyCoastalWealth.com. We're also brought to you by Angler Armory. Go to AnglerArmory.com and become a member for a mere $65. Kids are free. Lots of cool stuff. Angler Armory. We are also brought to you by Atlas Tracks. Go to AtlasTracks.com. Get a tractor for your boat, or in our case, it's the trailer. Keep track of your stuff. 
We are also brought to you by Jellux. Go to Jellux.com. Light up your life, light up your boat, your dock, in our case, the trailer. <laughs> Go to Jellux.com. That's our sponsors. All right. I uh, got a few current events here that I uh, thought was kind of cool. No, this isn't the weird one. <laughs> I actually made an intro for this, and I didn't upload it. I was all in a hurry. I was up till 1 o'clock in the morning yesterday doing stuff, and then I Excuses. forget it. Yeah, so, uh, all right. Let me put on my glasses again. Here we go. Just leave them on. You look smarter. Well, because when I help, look far away, I get, it get a little. Ooh. You only got a little. That's why. <laughs> that that's why ooh, I went with progressives. Ooh. That's why I went with progressives. Yeah. So, anyways, these are just supposed to be for reading. Geriatric that's problems. what I'm using for. Does it help you paint? Does it make you a decent painter? I have a worm on this painting. The decent digs are just going to go all day. <laughs> all right. Well, I saw this story here, and uh, I, it actually happened uh, last month. And I didn't see an outcome for this, so I'm assuming everything went all right. That's what we're going with. We're going to go with a a safe assumption there? Yeah, we're just going to go with I think it's okay. Uh, This guy over in Fort Pierce had a a fishing tournament that he put on with an open carry theme. And uh, he was trying to... uh, This this is from tcpalm.com. And uh, fishing gathering embraces the Second Amendment in Fort Pierce. And what this fellow that he put together, I don't think that's the fellow that it's down here. Uh, he put together uh, a get together a few times for guys for the Second Amendment, but now he wanted to make a tournament. M- main thing is not really all that important ab- about what this. Uh, obviously, nothing went wrong, so we didn't hear about any big shootings on the pier. Sure. So things went well. But what do you guys think about that? Like a, a tournament? That's cool. Well, on? you can open carry on the water. Yeah. yeah. Well, that that's was what he was trying to highlight. Of, yeah. And, and it, uh, ju- it just shows that people who actually own guns rightfully will come out to this and they show responsibility. Yeah. yeah. So I'm well, all for it. I, I am. I'm, I'm definitely all for it. I think that, uh, you know, I, I, I think that open carry states uh, do really, really well. They do. I'd be all for it. A- a- any, any state that has, you know, not lax gun regulations, but that has gun regulations done right. I feel mm-hmm. we're behind. Have a better, have a better, you know, quality of life. But yeah, I mean, to any any of you that are watching that don't know the regulations, if you are in the if you are in the action of going camping, hunting, hunting. or fishing, fishing, you have the ability. If you are a, they uh, actually assistant state attorney Jeffrey Hendricks said just that. If you're going or coming from those practices. Mm-hmm. Or, or at or those practices, engaged, yeah. you're allowed to open carry. That's correct. I mean, correct. you think of it, though, in a natural environment, you don't know what you're going to come across animal life, yeah. not just people. So you need to have yeah. some kind of protection. But well, here's, it's great. here's something I say to people. And I actually uh, had a discussion with somebody online just a few weeks ago. And he was a little taken back at somebody showing up at 4th Street to go wade fishing that was open carry. Mm-hmm. And, uh, he, you know, he was a little taken back from it, a little surprised. But, uh, you know, I... I've seen people get stabbed down there. I've seen people get mm-hmm. robbed, you know, yeah. the, and a, especially at night. And when you're under some of these bridges, or you, you know what I mean? Like you're in some areas yeah. that are they're out of the way. Night man. fishing, yeah, anything. You're, they're yeah. out of the way, and there's not that many people there, and there's not a whole lot you can do if something happens, and it does happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. I saw this story, and I thought it was interesting. At most everybody that uh, commented on it had kind of a negative opinion about it. <laughs> and, and, yeah. so I can imagine. For, for the record, for the record, any of you guys need guns, the quickest and easiest way to go get a back, background check and get your gun? Arm Armed anglers. anglers. Armed anglers, yeah. There you go. Arm party it's quick. anglers. Good segue, bro. Yep. It's quick. Good segue. <laughs> no, Best you... Bring I mean, your best of both worlds, casting yeah, and blasting. blasting. <laughs> <laughs> we came up with that one in Orlando last year. <laughs> I'm gonna have to use that for a who's tagline. <laughs> That's it. It. We did that. We went to hell at the moon, and we that you can write on the wall. We put yeah. armed anglers casting yeah. and blasting. We, nice. we it was up there for like a half hour. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. My my only recommendation to anybody who's gonna go out and, and open carry just. Be responsible. Be uh, don't you know, be the guy they use against us it, later. Exactly. Yeah. That, that's exactly. It. I mean, be responsible. You know, make sure that you're in a, a snapped holster. Make sure that you're following the regulations. Don't and don't sure. hang it on your center console windshield. I've seen that before because it's going to take one way yes. for it to bounce off, hit, shoot. Yep. Also, when you're going offshore, a lot of people don't don't consider that. But when you're going offshore, there's a lot of things that can happen to you, and, and you know, people can come up to you. And tell you to just get off your boat. It does happen. It, it, has, it has happened. That's the you don't you don't hear about it a lot, but yeah. you know you heard about you know the the, the boats pirate. washing up <coughs> on, on the shores of Texas and stuff. Yep. And that's because you have people coming from you know the lower, the lower countries 
yeah. coming up and, and acting like and got, I don't think he meant I don't think he meant it the way that <laughs> sounded, but <Yeah. laughs> they're south of us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, I, there, I just there are modern day pirates. Yes. No matter which way you look at it, there are modern day pirates. I don't know. All I'm saying is I have seen some craziness out on the water like, before. Well I've, think about it with me too. I'm a guy. Who is coming on my boat? You never know. Right. I'm I'm not gonna lie, I carry it. Just to let you know, guys, Bobby's scared of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> <laughs> All right, moving on to the next story. <coughs> um, I saw this here, and I was like, oh, man, keep your uh, pets inside. Rare Florida panther attacks and kills a cat in the front yard of a home, and it's all caught on video. Oh, well, tap oh, wow. <laughs> so my thing is, uh, in my neighborhood, there's a warning for Coyote. uh, coyotes yep. right in the city, right? So if you live next to the woods... Well, there's a potential panther out there. Are they cougars? What are they? Like Pan- well, we yeah, have panthers. Florida cougars. panthers here, yeah. yeah. Cougars. There's yeah. The same Florida thing, pan- right? I mean, it's about the Bobcats. Same thing. There's all kinds of stuff. Not out. the street cougars. But I mean, I'm worried enough about my little Chihuahua in my neighborhood with the coyotes. Yeah, and I've by seen the, the way, coyotes going through my neighborhood. About a month ago, a hawk swooped down trying to pick her up. <laughs> I had a hawk <laughs> swoop down in the city. In the city, my dog was attacked. Yeah. I think we might have to do some uh, numbers control on the hawks. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think they're on the endangered <laughs> I list. I thought there was a picture for this. I'm trying to find the dang thing. But, man, can you even imagine how you feel? You come out to the front door. <laughs> Fluffy! Yeah. Fluffy, no! <laughs> yeah. There's nothing it's being you can thrown do. away. Who, who leaves your cat outdoors in the woods? Because those mm-hmm. those panthers don't look like they can't jack you up. You know what oh, I mean? No. Like they they look like they, they got can the jack walk like up. I'm the baddest one. When that look, well there there you go. Yeah, I got. There's a little picture there. I, we I, don't see it. I, I, Did you I see the one where it was I a video? I think yours went down. Uh, okay, whatever. Whatever. You ever see the video? Anyways. Where they're walking along that like that, that like boardwalk in the oh, woods. Oh yeah, and the, and the panther comes right and, by right, right by on the boardwalk. Oh yeah. my god! No clean drawers right there. <laughs> no, uh-uh. that, that was not a clean drawer. Uh, yeah, especially because there, because <laughs> they're on a wooden, boardwalk. Yeah, wooden boardwalk. You're almost like there's enclosed. nowhere you can go. Uh-uh. <laughs> you jump that, off. There's woods pan- on both sides. That panther st- like kind of paused for a minute. I like, looked at him and like kind of like stared at him as they went by. Like, don't move. Don't move. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will jack you up. <laughs> I'm just looking at this picture, dude. That nothing will freeze you up faster than if you come face to face with that thing and you, like you're just. It's just you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No well, way, dude. No clean drawers. I have a house cat that'll mess you up. <laughs> you know what I mean? I got a little house cat that will jack you up if you ain't careful, man. That thing will get you. All right, moving on to the next story. We're uh, we're gonna run through these quick because we are running late. Florida python hunters will work in the Everglades National Park, and I thought this was cool because they are paying about 150 mm-hmm. people to go out and hunt these snakes down. I'm like, well, has it gotten that bad? It's it's really bad. really bad. It, really and bad. they've said uh, somewhere in this article that I probably won't be able to find right now, but it said somewhere up to 90. Wait, oh, here it is. Tens of thousands of pythons. Uh, this uh, is on WFLA.com, Florida Python Hunters. Uh, do, 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 Florida. You think, man, those things lay eggs, and it's like... Oh, yeah, 20, it's a nest of them. Like yeah, 20, 30, 30, no, no, 20, 30 at a time. Yeah, they then, say tens of thousands of pythons are estimated to be slithering through the Everglades. Scientists say the giant constrictor snakes have eliminated 99% of the native mammals in the Everglades. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Decimating food sources for native predators such as panthers and alligators. They found them eating deer. They oh, found yeah. It. How do you catch a deer? That thing's fast. Oh, have you seen how big these you, snakes you, are? These, I have. These pythons I mean, I'm just saying, though, like, deers are... Well, they come big. down to get water, and that's when they're vulnerable. Yeah, they're right yeah. We're, also, we're also talking about Florida deer and not... Yeah, they're dogs. They're, they're yeah. small. You know, they're, they're not real, real big deer. So, well, I'm sure it's not eating a full-grown adult. It's probably well, like I mean, a small but here's baby the, here, And here's where the problem is. I used to have... Uh, a, a Burmese python, and when it finally got too big for my, in, in, you know, enclosure that I had for it, I donated it to the wildlife refuge, and they used it for education for kids. I didn't go turn it loose in the yeah. woods. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, th- there's places that will take them. Pretty much yeah. any. Donate too. them there. Well, you, you know add I mean? that on top of the fact that now they're finding saltwater crocodiles all through the Everglades. <laughs> we got mm-hmm. a real problem down there, so. Uh, but I thought it was pretty cool, man. They're paying guys. Where was the? They had a breakdown, I thought, of the K 
cash they're paying out Speaking for. Speaking of snakes, have you seen like the past year or two the amount of rattlesnakes that are going across saltwater now? Yeah. You see the video down Jeff there Vickers. in the Keys? Yeah. Well, that Jeff Vickers just had a, a rattlesnake. Yeah. That he, he posted. The amount. Local. The amount. This of thing was in the water and yeah. the Keys coming right at the boat. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. had a I had a pygmy last year do it, but it just seems like it's more and more common. Are they evolving yeah. to be able? To I mean, we're talking local here. Yeah. Captain Jeff Jeff, Jeff Vickers had yeah. uh, a video on his Facebook feed. All right. Well, they uh, I can't find it now, but they were saying something like they're paying a hundred bucks per snake uh, over a certain size. I can't remember. It's probably like four foot and above. Mm-hmm. I don't know why you would put a size limit on it. Like they all gotta go, but well, they all gotta go. Hundred bucks a snake, man. Yeah. If you go out there and you're good at that, there's tens of thousands out there. There's some money to be made. There's definitely some money to be made. You know what I'm saying? I mean, granted, you gotta go romping through the Everglades every day, but. I don't know how dangerous that is. I imagine those guys in the airboats are the ones going out after yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. So uh, go catch some pythons. Get you some money. Mm, well, I think I'm missing a story here. No, that was it. All right. That's it for current events. All right. Woo, woo. Um, let me see if I can find that. <laughs> I did find one uh, crazy Florida story, but it's not. It's not too bad. Not you falling asleep on the mic over there, Amanda? I see you like leaning on the mic. <laughs> it's past my Hold bedtime. <laughs> Her booze are wearing off. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did it again. I keep opening this wrong one. I thought this was kind of amusing because uh, this happened, I believe, last week. Lake Worth falsely sends out zombie alert during power outage. Oh, oh yes, I saw that one. Yeah. The power went down, so their announcement. Hold on, I'm getting it here. Power outage and zombie alert for residents of Lake Worth and Terminus, which is a, uh, a fictional city in the show Walking Dead. <laughs> <laughs> there are now far less than 7,380 customers involved due to extreme zombie activity. Restoration time uncertain. You know, you got to deal with the zombie <laughs> issue every once in a while. They get out of hand and you got you to gotta take care of it. I yeah, mean, that's it. You what know. else are you going to do? I saw that stupid story spread on Facebook, like, like different websites picked it up and yeah, it's stupid. I just <laughs> and then they got the junkies confused walking down the street yeah, all no, like, like somebody some was having a little bit of fun at work. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. <laughs> it, either that or if they actually have that in in the can waiting <laughs> they, just in they case. got their yeah. they got their pink slip and they're like, watch this. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Zombie alert! Oh, I, I would have done way worse what, than that. What, what causes that particular message to come out? I mean, is there somebody going? Oh, you know what? This would be funny. Yeah. <laughs> I exactly. mean, look, look at the. I mean, that's if Jay Smith works at the power company. Yeah, <laughs> sure. it's almost like the Hawaiian guy hitting the false alarm with the nuclear. Yeah, yeah did you yeah, hear about yeah, that? Yeah. I mean, yeah. God, that was nuts, man. <laughs> I got a friend of mine who's over in who lives in in Hawaii. I, my friend came back. He came in the shop a week ago. He said, actually sent. Yeah. A, he actually had a screenshot of that. That was interesting. He said that was the most. For like 15 minutes, they thought they were dying. He said that 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 alarm was going off. It was early in the morning. Just well, he said that thing went off, and it went off for 15 minutes, no, no stopping, no explanation. So everybody thought it was real. Yeah, and they're sitting there thinking there was people trying to hide their kids down and, in and, sewers and the and sewers stuff. in the yeah, yeah. And, yep. Nuts. I'll be honest with you. If a nuclear bomb is coming to where you live, yeah. You know, sewers ain't gonna help. You don't want to live through it. Though. No. Like, <laughs> you're just gonna you're just gonna smell bad when yeah. you die. That's the all. best thing that can happen is it just goes fast, man. You don't want to live through that's that. Man. So, anyways, that's our show ending on a depressing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, guys. You can get all of these uh, shows that we do in audio form on iTunes, Stitcher, all the places you can find podcasts. We're really trying to get that fired up and going. If you could stop by iTunes and give us a subscribe and a like, as well as our YouTube channel, we need some love. We need a little help. This one might take a little longer. We have to kind of stitch it yeah, together. Yeah, we're going to have to stitch <laughs> this together. I'm sorry about all the breakdowns. And uh, we, we, if we're driving a Chevy here, I don't know what's going on. So. I don't know. <laughs> all right, uh, Mike, what's the best way to keep up with you guys online? Uh, you can reach us at armedanglers.com. Uh, you can also hit us up on the Facebook page at Facebook uh, Armed Anglers. Those are our two most popular you know, forms of contact. Also, our telephone number is 727-945-1808. guys have any questions, just give us a phone call. That's why we're there. Awesome. Thanks for being here. Bobby, how do we keep up with you? Look up uh, Florida Fishing Experience on Facebook, or you can give me a call at 727-271-3257. I've got one day left for scalloping season coming up in July up in my area. 
So get onto that. How long has it been since they've had that open? Oh up man, I, I think it's it, been a long since time. I was like six years old. So yeah. it's got to be 24, 25 wow, years. Wow, that's been a long time. Wow. Yeah. You can also reach Bobby at decentcaptains.com. Decent 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 <laughs> oh. Guys, plenty stop. of decents. Plenty of decents. <laughs> <laughs> Find me at plenty of decents.com. Amanda, right? I'm seriously gonna message ask. Amanda and tell her that uh, she better watch out for this this guy. I don't know. It sounds Jason like Jason Kyle. With ISIS. Two first names. He must be decent. ISIS. ISIS. All right, everybody. Go to fpnoutdoors.com. Check out everything FPN related, and we will see you next week. Tight lines, everybody. See you.